Hello and welcome to another edition of Plane Talk here on Eagle Eye TV. I'm your host, Ken Ward, and this week we're with Auburn University's new Chief Operating Officer, Lieutenant General Burgess. Thank you so much, General, for joining us today. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having me. General, first I'd like to kind of get your comment a little, or get your perspective on some of the issues that have been in the news recently. You were, um, <laughs> you've been in the intelligence community for many decades prior to your time here at Auburn University. And I'd love to get your comment on um, President Trump revoking um, former director, CIA director um, Brennan's um, clearance. And um, he's talking about revoking several other people, including um, James Clapper and, um, and Sal Yates. I'd love to get your comment on that. Thanks for the opportunity to excel, as I say. <laughs> uh, so I still have my security clearance uh, because I still provide uh, some, some advice in terms of that. Uh, for me, it's pretty simplistic uh, at the end of the day. A security clearance is a privilege. It's not a right. Uh, ultimately, the president is the ultimate arbiter on that. Uh, and if someone demonstrates, at least in the uh, uh, eye of the ultimate arbiter, that they're not trustworthy or not worthy of that privilege, then you take that privilege away. Uh, it would be disingenuous of me for me not to say that I, I wish there had been another way to come to resolution on this. but. There's absolutely no doubt in my military mind, as I say, that the president has the authority to do what he did. And, you know, he has access to more information than we in the public do. And so a decision was made. That's what he gets paid for. You were in the intelligence community, like we mentioned, for many years. You were the director of the, the military side of the intelligence community um, at the end of your career. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit about what you learned from that experience and um, what you're trying to bring to your new position here at Auburn um, what you learned um, for several decades over in the military? Well, you know, one of the lessons that I really had driven home to me, uh, and I speak on this often when I talk about any organization, uh, whether it be Auburn University, whether it be the Defense Intelligence Agency, whether it be the United States Intelligence Community, uh, the most important resource in any of those organizations uh, are the people. And at the end of the day, uh, if you have the right people uh, and you give them the tools that they need, uh, they'll do a good job for you. And for a senior leader, uh, as I would tell people, it's my responsibility always to give people that work for me, uh, whether it be here at Auburn, whether it be uh, back then, uh, to give them the time, the resources, and the personnel that they need to accomplish whatever task it is we've given them. Uh, and the good news is uh, it was a great community that I had an opportunity to work with uh, in the military and in the United States intelligence community. Uh, they were like-minded, focused on the security of the United States, for the most part uh, dedicated to the security of this nation. Uh, as in any large organization, uh, and that organization for the United States intelligence community uh, is somewhere around, at the unclassified level, around 100,000. That's not including the men and women in uniform. Uh, and inside the Defense Intelligence Agency, you know, that number for me was upwards between uh, 16,500 and 17,000 people. Uh, are you going to have that 1%? Uh, yes, you are. That cause you to have to use all of your management skills, as I say, uh, <laughs> in dealing with things. Uh, yeah, you are. But the same thing I found from the folks that I worked with in my past, I find here at Auburn. Uh, we have a lot of great people here at Auburn University that are trying to move this university ahead, uh, that are trying to do the right thing every day. And my role is to help empower them to do that. Uh, and so I, I'm loving my new role and enjoying my new, my new surroundings as I get to come back home. You, um, before you started your current position here at Auburn as Chief Operating Officer, you were head of Auburn University's Cyber Initiative. Could you talk a little bit about what Auburn is trying to explore with that new initiative? Yeah, so, you know, yeah, my role, you know, was working on the national security and cyber side. And so uh, we have some great capabilities here at Auburn University. 
uh, part of any university or any you know entity outside of DC is getting a light to shine on it to say we have something to contribute here and we do uh, in most cases most of ours are in those students that we turn out uh, that are coming out of our uh, colleges uh, that we send off specifically with uh, uh, capabilities on the cyber side and sometimes they just needed to know which door to knock on uh, or we needed to know what do we need to do in our curriculum to stay current with the needs not only of industry but government and so that was my real role in trying to help facilitate uh, some of that with the faculty and also with the uh, with the student side and so uh, I found myself uh, uh, not only talking to students but talking to faculty but talking to uh, potential employers uh, that would take advantage of those capabilities and just ensuring that there was a marriage between those two and an understanding of what each brought to the table. President Leith has talked a lot about wanting to increase Auburn's um, role in the, the national dialogue, especially um, here in the state of Alabama, but also in um, D.C. and other big mm -hmm. cities and places like that and centers of influence. Could you talk a little bit about how your, your past experience with um, NDC and with the federal government and how you're going to bring that to the table here at Auburn and trying to, to increase Auburn's image? Yeah, fair. So uh, in, in terms of what, what I've tried to do, uh, connects to the previous question that we had in terms of some of that connection that we're doing. Uh, the state of Alabama, uh, with Auburn as a primary player in that, does bring great capability. But let's be fair, you know, you and I were talking beforehand, you just came out of D.C. yourself. Uh, so when someone starts talking about the national debate on cyber and are we being hacked and all that, their minds don't automatically around the nation turn to, what does Alabama think about this? <laughs> I mean, you know, what does inside the beltway, as we say, think? What does Silicon Valley have to say about it? You know, so that's where the conversation generally, you know, flows. We want to be part of that discussion. And so whether it be, you know, bringing new technologies to the forefront or as we're looking at, for example, in our College of Engineering, we have an institute over there called the McCrary Institute. We've just hired an individual that's part of that national debate in terms of some of that national security piece on the cyber side especially, uh, and we're bringing him in uh, to put in charge of the McCrary Institute which is primarily focused on protection of our electrical infrastructure uh, piece in terms of that. We have some capabilities there. No school, no place, and I used to say this all the time, even while I was working in D.C. in my five and a half years here, no one place is going to be the golden egg that provides every answer to every question in that sphere. We have a particular capability here, and we just want to be part of the discussion. All right. Thank you so much, General Burgess. We're going to be right back here on Plain Talk with Eagle Eye TV to talk a little bit about um, the General's new role here at Auburn University and the whole reorganization here on campus. Thank you so much for, for watching, and join us in just a moment. Fans, direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. You never really leave Auburn, because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, 
so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis. Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. Welcome back to Plain Talk here on Eagle Eye TV. I'm your host, Ken Ward, and today we're joined by Auburn's Chief Operating Officer, General Burgess. Um, General Burgess, could you talk a little bit about your new role here on campus as the Chief Operating Officer and presently kind of reorganization here at Auburn uh, at the top level as well? Fair. So uh, the President did, uh, as he came in and did his assessment looking across the university uh, in terms of how you know, he would like to organize it uh, in, in terms of making sure that the organizational construct that we had helped address his priorities in terms of where he wanted to move and what he wanted to do uh, for the university. And so the structure that you see set up uh, with some direct reports to him, but really with uh, a, an amalgamation of some uh, specific uh, elements of the university underneath a, a senior vice president on the student affairs side because one of the things you do not want to mess with at Auburn University in my mind that you only want to improve and that we are committed to is the undergraduate student experience which by every count for anybody I can talk to and remember you're talking to an Auburn University grad now, I came along a lot before you did, so I graduated in 1974, and for the audience, no, it was not API back then, it really was <laughs> Auburn University. I remember that student experience, and it's part of what brought me back here. So, we want to continue to move that idea ahead, and so there's a great engagement with the, with the students, with the SGA and others, uh, with the 500 different organizations that are on this campus that are student organizations. Uh, so Bobby Woodard, I think, is doing a great job in, in helping us understand that and making sure we're, we're listening and helping address some of that. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the academic side, which, of course, all the students really love because, you know, that's the reason you're here uh, is, uh, is for the academic piece. And so, you know, the provost with that, Bill Hargrave, uh, you know, we're ensuring that the programs that we have address not only what the students are looking for, but when they go through that, is there something there at the other end? Because you may want to study something in particular, but at the end of the day, there needs to be somebody hiring in that field. So we're trying to match up what we have in terms of what we want to address as a land grant institution in terms of those desires with what also we'll produce on the other end uh, for our students. So, you know, he's got a, a good handle on that with the deans. And I, I think, you know, they're also being uh, very open in terms of that discussion. And, and then last would be my role that I would put it uh, as the chief operating officer. So, the easiest way to understand that is the day-to-day -day running, so whether it be the facilities maintenance piece, whether it be the business practices of all that, whether it be the HR side of the house, uh, Tiger Card, all those things that, that people do, parking, transit. I, I'm, I'm the guy that tries to help ensure that everything moves in a good direction. Now, quite candidly, even though you didn't ask the question, uh, you know, I'm already poking into, since I've been in the job now for three months, in, in my opinion, uh, the very start of the semester, uh, generally speaking, for the most part, went okay, but there were some problems. And so I'm, I'm digging into those as we speak now. Uh, an example would be parking, you know, the, the lottery for finding a parking place. It didn't work as well as it should have. Uh, the, end of, uh, the company that we used for that, you know, had told us that some things were going to be in a good place. That didn't play out, and so we've done what we need to do from a uh, uh, contracting side, so to speak, and we, we want to improve that. But we're looking for input, because at the end of the day, uh, we want to make this the absolute best place it can be for not only our undergraduates but our graduate students 
and our faculty and employees. It ought to be a place people want to be at. And that's the president's charge to us. And the president has also mentioned, and you touched on it a little bit there, he wants to make Auburn more efficient and to work more on being kind of like a business type environment. Could you talk a little bit more about that role and how your new position is going to try to achieve that goal he has? And, and, and so clearly uh, inside my particular areas in terms of that, uh, you're always going to be maintaining and building facilities. Are we getting the best facility we can for the best dollar? Because let's be fair, uh, all these facilities and everything that we do, uh, a lot of it comes from people making gifts, which are always great. A lot of it comes from the state helping us out, which they've been very good, especially here recently. But it's also based on the tuition that you pay as a student. And so for us to keep all of those things in balance, uh, you know, requires that we need to be finding those efficiencies you're talking about on some of that. And the same thing then on our business practice side of the house uh, in terms of it, whether it be the HR side of the house, because at the end of the day, if you want to be the best, you need to have the best. And there's things that go along with that, not only in terms of pay, that as you enter your new life, you're going to be paying close attention to the benefits package that go along with all that. But, but my role is to try and figure out, okay, where is the right lane on all of that so that we bring the best value to the employee, to the student that we can for the stewardship of the resources that we've been given. And then finally, my last question is, you are an Auburn graduate, like you said, and you achieved a lot in your career. Could you talk a little bit and give some advice to other Auburn, graduate, Auburn students that might be watching right now that might want to go down the um, intelligence community route or the national security um, career field? Well, what I would say to the students, and you notice now, I'm, I'm looking directly at y'all because th this is about you. First of all, I wouldn't take anything for having been a graduate of Auburn University. It was a great place for me. I enjoyed my four years here. If I could have figured out any way to stretch that, as some of you do, uh, out to another football season or even another year, uh, trust me, I would have tried to figure that out because I really enjoyed my time here. But if you go back to the basics uh, for Auburn in terms of our creed, and what George Petrie said in terms of, you know, this is Auburn, but it talks about hard work and why we love, but it really is about hard work. Now, sitting in front of you is living proof, as I say, that the Lord has a sense of humor. Uh, I was blessed more than I ever deserved to be, and I am every day. Uh, but uh, I had a lot of people that I worked with over the years that took great care of me, whether they be superiors, whether they be my subordinates, whether they be my peers. Uh, I tried to be a team player, but I went to work every day. I did the best I could, and I was able to look myself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I did the best I could in every situation I was faced with. Part of that foundation was laid at Auburn University. A lot of credit goes to my parents and my upbringing and all the folks that did that. But Auburn played a pivotal and major role in that. And it gave me some of the tools that I needed uh, for the career that I ended up having. And so my door is always open for students, uh, even as it was in my previous life, uh, you know, when I was say, serving as a senior counsel for national security programs and all doing that. If there's any way I can be helpful or you ever need advice, please don't hesitate to call because after all, we are in family, and I appreciate each and every one of you. And I appreciate this opportunity to talk with you today. We appreciate it as well. Thank you so much, Joan Burgess, for joining us. And thank you for watching this episode of Plain Talk here on Eagle Eye TV. Join us each week for an in-depth conversation with a mover, or shaker, a mover and shaker in this community, in this state, or at this university. Thank you so much, and have a great week.